Hey, Math 6, Mrs. Spence here. Just wanted to go over a few definitions and reminders from our notes that we took on Wednesday before we begin our next video and worksheet together, just to review. So think back to our notes that we took. They're here on your screen um, about integers and their opposites. First of all, I want to start with the definition of what an integer is. Remember that an integer is any, excuse me, let's get this pen working here. All right, any positive or negative whole number. So it's any number that doesn't have any fractions or decimals attached to them, no pieces, just the whole, but they can be both positive and negative. So we are talking about situations that go below zero now. Um, reminder of the definition for positive numbers. Positive numbers are any number that are greater than zero or larger than zero. They have more than a zero amount, okay? Uh, if we're talking about money, which is most commonly used to help us see integers properly, um, if we're talking about money, we want to have positive money. We want to have the higher the number on the positive side, the better. So for instance, if we're looking at this number line, I would much rather have $10 than I would have $2. And I would definitely rather have $2 more than I would have $0 or even worse, be in debt to somebody $10. So that is just a quick reminder that the higher the number, the farther to the right we're gonna go on our number line there, okay? Negative numbers are numbers that are less than zero. So they are going to be to the left side of a zero on a number line. They're gonna be all the numbers that go to the left. And you will see on the number line, we kind of have a twilight zone thing that happens once you cross that magic number zero. All right, so on the right, it's traditional to count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But as soon as you hit that kind of twilight zone area, that neutral zero, notice that you're kind of counting backwards from right to left this time. So it's negative one, then negative two, then three, negative four, so forth. So you'll see that negative 10 is way out here when we would think that that would be maybe this direction because our positive is that way. But as we discussed in class, and as you'll see a little bit more next week when we talk about absolute value, um, you are that many steps away from zero. So that's kind of what happens on that negative side. It kind of turns into the opposite world, which ties nicely into the next thing that we want to review, which is the word opposites. So we are very used to dealing with positive numbers. We have been dealing with positive numbers since kindergarten. And now we are beginning to introduce their opposites, which are numbers that are on the other side of the number line, equal distance away from zero. For instance, let me erase some of these marks that I've made. For instance, if we are looking at zero right here, as our basis for how many steps we are away, we would see, let's say, let's look at the number three, positive three. And we were trying to find its opposite. We would have to count how many steps away from that neutral mark, zero, one, two, three. So positive three is three steps away. So its opposite would be three steps away from zero in the opposite direction. So that would be like going one, two, three steps away to the left, and we end on negative three, which is the opposite of positive three. So we understand opposites, big, small, tall, short, um, dark, light, same thing with numbers. The opposite of what it would be, the exact opposite, or the mirror image of it, in number sense would be just on one side of the number line versus the other, okay? All right, so there's your visual here too in your notes. That was really good to look at. This were equal distance away from zero on the number line. There it is right there, five steps up or five steps down. And if you were to turn that number line horizontally, five steps to the right and five steps to the left, make those two numbers opposite of each other. 
So now you're going to look at the video to help you with the representing integers in the real world. Hi, Math 6 students. This is Mrs. Spence, and this week your video is on representing integers. So integers is just a fancy term for a number, a number that has no fractions or decimals. It's all the whole numbers. So you might be thinking, yeah, Miss Spence, we've been dealing with whole numbers since elementary school, and you're exactly right. But there is a one big key difference in sixth grade math, and that is that we are no longer just dealing with the right side of a number line we now begin to work with the left side of the zero on a number line as well. So we are beginning to talk about negative numbers. So up to this point, you've always dealt with positive numbers. For example, three plus two we know is five, or we can do um, four times three is 12. Everything you have done has dealt with positive numbers. But now we are going to begin to look at negative numbers and we are going to be operating with negative numbers or calculating with them. So we've got to start by understanding what keywords represent positive numbers and what keywords represent negative numbers or negative situations. Okay, so we are going to look at this worksheet representing integers. And we're going to look at the keywords that help us to understand the sign of the numbers that they're talking about. So we're going to highlight the keywords in each number problem um, to tell us whether or not we are talking about positive numbers or negative numbers. Before we do that, I want to show you something that is very important. And it's these symbols right here. So we know in math that they always use symbols. And the symbols usually just mean one thing. But you might be thinking, wait a second, I know that symbol. She's talking about positive numbers, but we use that symbol somewhere else in calculations. And you're exactly right. We use that symbol when we talk about adding or addition. But because mathematicians, they like to keep things simple, um, the addition symbol is the same thing also as the plus sign for our positive numbers because they mean the same thing. This symbol here is talking about increasing in size or getting bigger or going higher in the number line or adding on to things making our numbers higher. For example, if you have zero dollars and you do a chore and earn five dollars, you are going higher on a number line starting here, one, two, three, four, five, ending on a positive five. Okay, and we write just a five without this little plus sign because we always assume that if we're talking about a number, it is talking about a positive number. We can't make that same assumption here for this sign here. This negative sign also means subtracting or subtraction. And anytime we deal with numbers that are negative, we do have to use the negative symbol in front, okay? So again, let's use that same situation. We're talking about money. Let's say we go to the store and we left our wallet at home, but we see something at Target and we're like, man, I really want that. I want that $5 item. Um, Mom, I promise I'll pay you back, okay? Uh, so we are going to be in debt. We have no money with us, but we're going to spend one, two, three, four, five dollars. And so how much money is in our current bank account or wallet would be negative five because I just wrote mom and I owe you for five dollars. So that would be a negative five. And therefore, we have to have our negative there to show us that we are in debt $5 instead of having $5 with us. All right. So keep that in mind when we start to look at these numbers. Those plus signs are a clue to us that we are going to be getting bigger or going to the positive side of the number line. Just like our negative numbers will show us that we are going below zero um, on the number line, either horizontal or vertical number line. And we're going to use both of those to look at these situations. All right, so we're going to start with number one. 
and we are going to begin by highlighting our keyword that tells us whether or not we're talking about a positive situation or a negative situation. So a deposit of $300. So if we're depositing money into a bank account, we are growing our bank account. So that is going to be a positive situation. We are adding to it. Adding how much? Adding 300. And again, when we talk about positive numbers, it is assumed that anytime you write a number that it is positive. So in simplest form, you don't need to write the little plus symbol here because we know that it is positive if we write the number unless it has that negative sign in front of it. All right, let's look at number two. It rose nine degrees Celsius this morning. So it doesn't matter what our starting point is. If we are rising, let's look, let's pretend this is a thermometer. If we are rising at all, we are going in the more positive direction. We are adding to our degrees that it currently is. For example, let's say it is zero degrees Celsius and we are adding or rising nine degrees Celsius we would be at a positive nine. So rising is positive. Rising how much? Positive nine. All right. <clears throat> Number three, we have a debt of $50 to my friend Rosie. So Rosie lent you money and you are now in debt to her $50. So debt, we know, is a reduction in how much is in your account or how much you have. So that would be subtracting from your bottom line, $50. So that would be negative 50. And again, it is negative, so we have to write the negative symbol. All right, number four, a pay cut. Pay cuts are showing a reduction in how much you receive in your pay. So it's getting smaller or reducing that amount. So it'd be a negative, negative how much? Negative 800. So a pay cut of $800 would be negative 800. Number five, 60 degrees below sea level. So let's pretend we have sea level right here at your zero. And if we're going below sea level, we know we're going this direction. Well, what numbers are represented below the zero? The negatives. And so we are going down negative 60. So negative 60 is the number that represents 60 degrees below sea level. 10 degrees above sea level. So now we're at sea level and we're going above it. So we are growing in our sea level. And so that is plus going to this positive side here. You could also look at it this way if you're going horizontal, but for sea level, it's easier to see it vertically. So this is going to be up 10 degrees. So a positive 10 shows up 10 degrees or 10 degrees above sea level. Number seven, a loss of 14 pounds. So we're losing. And this one's easy to see. If we're talking about losing something, we are subtracting from that amount. Oops, excuse me. It doesn't want to stay put. Stay. Okay. All right, sorry about that, guys. So if we're losing, that is going to be a subtraction. We're losing something, we're reducing, we're going below, that's all going to be subtraction. So we're going to lose 14 pounds. So it's going down 14, that would be negative 14. Okay, again, it doesn't matter what you're starting at. We could have started at 100 pounds. And if we're going down 14 pounds, this negative 14 can symbolize, like we talked about before, minus 14 or subtracting 14. So our answer would be 86 pounds, but we are not actually trying to solve this problem. We're just trying to see what number, positive or negative, shows a loss and 14 pounds. That would be negative 14. All right, number eight, an increase of five pounds. So they gained five pounds. So if we're gaining, we are adding on to our original weight. So that would be a positive five. 
Number nine, a deficit. Now, number nine and number 10, those are um, terms that you might not see very often, especially if you don't deal with accounting or finances or things like that. But deficits could also be called losses, profit and loss. Deficit is showing that you are going down in money or you are losing money. So that would be a negative situation. So a deficit of 350 would be negative 350. And then the opposite of that, a profit is gaining it or what you're actually adding on to your bottom line. So that would be a plus. So this is a positive $140 for a profit of $140. All right, so this is a good time to take a look at what all of these terms are indicating. Okay, so we can say that we know we're talking about positive and negative situations or positive and negative numbers. So let's take a look at some of those keywords here together in a list of which ones mean gaining or positive numbers. And that would be anything that's being added on. Okay, anything that we're adding, that we're increasing, uh, that we're gaining, anything above or going above where we currently are. All those would be plus situations or positive number situations. Um, if we're depositing into our account, our account is going in the positive direction. All right, so completely opposite of that, if we're looking at negative numbers, any keyword that you see that's talking about subtracting or losing a loss, um, decreasing, going below, uh, withdrawing. If you're withdrawing from your account, you are losing money or pulling out money. It is decreasing your amount in your account. Okay, so all of those are good keywords that you can think about to show positive situations or negative situations. Can you think of any more that you can add to that list? Think about some that you could possibly add to the list of both positive and negative situations. All right, I hope this video helped and we will see you next week.